Welcome back to my channel, chess fans. I have something special for you today. Game nine, round nine of the of the championship match turned out to be exactly, I'm eating my words because it turned out to be the boxing match that all us chess fans were waiting for. Vishy Anand has pulled out a very aggressive uh, play. He needed to do this. He needed to um, try and win this one because he lost two games in a row, disappointingly. I uh, deliberately hid... Actually, let me back this up because I have a position here. Um, I deliberately hid the, the uh, move list because I don't want anybody who has not seen the game and who has not heard the news to uh, be mad at me for spoiling it for them. So... Just like you don't want to spoil the end of a book for somebody, I'm not going to spoil this for you. I'm going to fast forward this like this here. I'm going to tell you that this is the Nimzu Indian with some variation. I won't go too deeply into that. <clears throat> I can say that if you are looking for a um, an expert uh, analyze of this game, um, I highly recommend two of the ones that I, that I subscribe to. That is uh, King's Crusher, of course, and uh, Chess Explained. Chess Explained is uh, done by Christoph uh, Selecki, German Grandmaster. And uh, I, sorry, I don't know the King's Crusher's actual name, but I have to look it up. But uh, both of these guys um, on YouTube, and you'll, you'll find links to it on my channel, uh, do an excellent job in analyzing, uh, with some differences between them, this game. But I want to give you my take on this. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to... Uh, flip the board every once in a while to show you both sides uh, so we're going to go through this until we get to the move 18 e5 uh, as you can see there's been some exchanges of pawns in the middle there's an equalization going on um, <clears throat> and at this point Magnus Carlsen pushed a, a couple of his pawns up pretty close to you know to Anand's area but is that this move e5 there it is that should be that should be move 18 e5 okay at this point Magnus Carlsen takes a lot of time okay I think it's either this move or the move after Magnus Carlsen at this point has 32 minutes less on his clock than Vichy Anand. And um, actually it was it was after the next couple of moves that he takes a very long time after this exchange here to push yeah there it is to push B3 which was uh, move let me see 22 yeah 22 after after uh, after Vichy Anand menaces Carlsen with this f5 pushing the pawn to f5 move, it takes Magnus a very long time to, to come up with pushing the b3 pawn. Uh, it, it is a suggested move. The, the commentators and the computer alike were, were, were suggesting this. But, you know, Magnus is worried here he is you know certainly watching these three pawns uh, uh, menacing his uh, the possibility of being uh, mated here and he even says so in the conf in the news conference afterwards so he does after a long time push push the, to the pawn to b3 and here's where the beauty of the, of of Vichy's ability to play comes in some of the most beautiful chess games have been where a, a chess player allows his opponent to queen a pawn, but it doesn't matter. He doesn't have enough time to use the extra queen. And, and Vichy is actually considering this. Okay? And after this B3 push... Vichy has about over a half an hour more time on his clock than, than Carlsen. And it turns out 
that he took 42 minutes on this move. Is it 42? I think it was 42 minutes, something like that. It was over 40 minutes. And Vichy did finally move the queen to f4. Now, why the why the problem? Well, the problem is is that Vichy is obviously worried about this pushing of queening this pawn. And some of his suggestions were uh, to defend with the rook and moving the queen to f4 would have would have left this square undefended but the calculations went where the idea here is that he wouldn't have enough time after the next uh, you know the idea here is to, is to is to raise the, the the rook and to do something like this and then to do something like this but uh, I'm sorry that's that's not right uh, I meant to to move the rook after moving the queen there and then moving the rook of course to to behind the queen you know the queen goes uh, here and then the rook goes here so in any case we're talking about a mating attack on the king and it didn't go exactly like this but uh, uh, that was the idea and does Carlson have enough time to actually queen this pawn no he doesn't and he has to defend and Carlson rightfully calculates and he doesn't make any mistakes here this is what this is the power of Carlson's mind it, it, it took some, it took him a long time to realize, but he needed to bring that knight back there, uh, in order. In fact, in fact, his idea is going to be to 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 so he can defend the 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 the, the king pawn square. But uh, in fact, that's what happens, and Anand does push the next pawn. And the idea, of course, like I just mentioned, is to bring the knight to to here, but uh, and he, and Anand does bring the queen to to h4, and Carlson does bring the knight to defend that square and the queen does go to h6 and here this is menacing so now Carlson decides to go ahead and push this pawn because he has no other better move this does dampen the idea this does menace getting the extra queen but let's see what happens if if he were to to even if, even if, uh, which, here, let's just go ahead and do the next move. Even if Carlson does queen the, 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 the pawn and, and with the check, the idea, the best idea is this. So he does queen, it is check. And again, Anon takes a, a, a lot of time to figure this out. And here's where I have to tell you now. If this were a boxing match, I would have to say that Anand tripped over a loose shoelace. The 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 idea here and and uh, the, the commentators were saying that this should be the next move to, to block with the bishop with the idea that with the with the knight still here and moving the rook here you would have a mating threat. And that would have worked, but as what happens sometimes, you know, in the heat of a game. See, if you're sitting there at a commentator, uh, it's easy. You're not you're not worried about the game. But if you're sitting there in front of the board and you're thinking of all these different calculations, and you suddenly have an idea, sometimes that there you have this impulse, and it's exactly what I think happened to Anand. He had this impulse to to, to put a different piece in a way, and in fact, he blundered. This is a mistake. This is a blunder. And Anand almost immediately, you can see the look on his face. Now, Anand is not nearly as animated as some of the other grandmasters. Uh, he's a very calm, cool, collected person. But you can see the look on his face. Uh, as soon as he let go of this piece, that he realized it was a blunder. Why was it a blunder? Because he didn't see, because the idea was that if if the knight if the bishop were to come to f1 
to block the check. Magnus had D1, and then at least there would have been an exchange and possibly thwarting the checkmate. But with Knight F1, now you have, unfortunately, what what Vichy had been blindsided and missed, and he said this in the in the in the uh, conference, so to speak, not in so many words, but the idea is now that now that this diagonal is open, after moving the knight off of this square, he opened this diagonal, and right immediately, of course. Uh, within a minute, it only took Carlson a minute to, to, to realize, and you can see the, the, uh, the look on his face. Um, he was delighted to have this unfortunate blunder of, of Vichy's because now Carlson has E1 instead. And because now Vichy cannot do Rook to H4 because of the immediate capture and and, um, and the trade-off. So this is what happens. And Vichy Anand resigned immediately after. Now, <clears throat> these two great sportsmen uh, immediately discussed, you know, they shook hands and they and they were talking about, you know, what just happened instantly after, after Vichy, Vichy had resigned on this move. Um, and it is a disappointment. I mean, I'm I'm a I'm a Vichy fan. And when we all saw this, in fact, the commentator, the the woman grandmaster, uh, the Indian woman grandmaster, what's her name? Tanya. I forgot her last name. I can tell you that if you can you can find this video, um, her eyes were watering. She was very upset. Um, this was an obvious blunder. Vichy knew it. They talked about it at the conference. Um, and and uh, both of them were very gracious. Magnus Carlsen was was a, a perfect gentleman about accepting this. He even said that uh, he was in danger of being checkmated. Um, and uh, it was fortunate for him that Vishan, Vichy Anand had, in fact, blundered. So I'm going to play this game slowly back. And I'm going to flip the board for you while I talk about a few things. So let's go ahead and um, replay this game. And you're seeing it from Vichy's side. He played white. But since you've viewed this from his side the whole time, I'm going to let you see what Carlson looked at you know, on his perspective. And uh, flip the board while it's playing. Oh, it won't let me while it's playing. Okay, well... Okay, well, we're going to stop it then, and uh, we're going to flip the board now, okay? And we're going to let you see what Carlson was seeing. Let's see Let's see if this computer program will work for me and let me replay it from now. Okay, good. So, <clears throat> this is what Magnus was seeing. And from Magnus's perspective, you, c you can see, I don't know if this will let me highlight squares while it's playing, but you can see that Magnus was watching these pawns. And he was, in fact, worried because he was mounting an attack. In the meantime, Magnus Carlsen was pushing his pawns on, on the queen's side. Vichy was pushing his pawns on the, on the king's side. This was a real boxing match. It was, and there you go, it was uh, unfortunate for Vichy that he would, you know, stumble like that. I could tell you that playing chess... And my casual, you know, not so big deal, uh, informal chess clubs, I have done things like that. I, I totally blundered, you know, stupid moves. Uh, unfortunately for for Vichy, fortunately for me, I'm not on global TV um, because, uh, in fact, this chess match, I watched it live at, you know, 6 o'clock in the morning here. Um you know, watching this chess match live. So this is a globally, worldwide available um, telecast of this of this match. 
depending on what time zone you're in, uh, it's obvious that uh, this game has been publicized and there's uh, some already analyzing of this game, some analytical stuff going on in this game long before I made in my video. Uh, for people who are in the nearer time zone to India, um, it would be easier for them. Uh, they're diligent enough to, to do it even though they're not in a time zone then still. But in any case, I managed to make this video now, which is now uh, approximately 12 hours after the game. And I'll be posting it within the next half hour or so. But this is a very cool, powerful game. I mean, this was a very exciting game. You have the potential here. Let me flip the board again to show you the idea that you're going to allow your opponent to queen and not care, not worry about it, and possibly checkmate him anyway. That is a, you know, an idea that is a humiliating thing to someone. If Vichy had pulled it off, if he had just moved the bishop instead of the knight, he could have pulled it off. There was some defense here, and, and I won't try to explain that the possible defense that, that, uh, uh, that uh, Magnus Carlsen had. I'll leave you to King's Crusher and um, Chess Explained to give you those ideas. Um, you might also want to check out uh, Chess.com. I think there was another one... Um, Chess Lessons Online, uh, all of those guys have an explanation of what he could have done to defend this. Um, but in any case, if he had, let's see if I can get this computer to do this. If, if instead, let me see, okay, if instead this, we're going to um, new variation on this and see what happens, then... Um, I think I think uh, 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 Magnus Carlsen would have moved D8, something to that effect, allowing for the possibility of exchanges up here, uh, trying to defend or thwart, thwart you know the the uh, checkmate idea. But nevertheless, I'm not going to go too far into that. Uh, the Chess Explained and King's Crusher both have a, a, a much more detailed and, and uh, understandable. A variation explanation for that. I just wanted to give you that idea. But let me tell you, this was a big disappointment for me. Um, I still have the deepest respect for, of course, both players. Magnus Carlsen playing uh, without any mistakes, but yet having the possibility of getting, I'm going to flip that for you again, uh, getting checkmated and admitting that graciously in the conference. Uh, Vichy Anand realizing almost instantly after he let go of his knight the mistake that he made. Um, and then go ahead and put that move back the way it was. Okay, that was the actual moves made. Um, this was an exciting game. I mean, it was really, really the boxing match. I mean, I had just made a video last, the last game, uh, game eight, where I said, don't expect you to, don't expect for, for them to start putting on the boxing gloves. But it's exactly, it, metaphorically speaking, is what happened in this game. And unfortunately, uh, you know, the, the person, the player that I'm a fan of, Vichy Anand, the champion, has stumbled perhaps over a loosened shoelace if this was a boxing match. And it caused him to lose the game. And this now brings the score to 6 3. Um, the first player to get to 6.5 points. Is the winner of the championship and uh, there may it's very likely now of course the game must go on the, the you know I'm hoping Vishyanand will will you know pick himself up and um, play on anyway like I said he is a champ and uh, I guess age has a has a has a, a factor in this and uh, after two hours or so of playing this obviously uh, he, he blundered it happens i've seen games with vichy from years ago where his opponent literally missed the checkmate and vichy went on to win because of of his opponent's blunder so it does happen 
and um, it's just unfortunate that it happened in this way where, where it was a matter of a single move but in any case the game must go on and tonight is the next game it may very well be the last game because even if he draws it is six and a half to three and a half uh, Magnus Carlsen and that would give Magnus Carlsen the early championship however if Vichy can come back come back punching uh, tighten up his shoelaces this time and uh, manages to win this next game it'll go on for another game so whatever happens happens and um, I just wanted to say that this certainly was one of the most exciting games out of the entire match it was the most exciting game especially with the idea of queening uh, uh, and allowing the queen and still having the possibility of winning <clears throat> so I don't know what else to say I'm starting to uh, repeat myself here um, again I, I have the deepest respect for both players Magnus Carlsen is, is, has proven that he is an amazing uh, calculating player um, Vichy Anand has shown that he he is the champion that he always was and both players have shown the sportsmanship and graciousness of, of uh, true geniuses that they are so with that said uh, thank you for watching keep on playing and let's hope for another battle <laughs> tonight let's let's see if Vichy can can uh, go out with uh, with fireworks thank you again for watching <laughs>